basement of La Penta. This is WICR. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the final segment of today's episode of the Sports Wall Jersey. Joe and Big Shaw Rob back here in studio. And what a fitting way to end the show with a New York football recap. Obviously, Big Shaw Rob, the New York Jets right now find themselves in a pretty good position, beating the Dolphins pretty handily in the London game right now. And look, at the end of the day, to me, the Dolphins are unwatchable, but that doesn't take anything away from the Jets. Just a very solid performance. Oh, most definitely, Joe. You know, you got to give it, though. Fireman Ed, he went to London and yeah. won for Fireman Ed. I was, <laughs> tell me, were you surprised that he had a passport? I was very surprised. I thought the guy just lives at the stadium. I thought he just lived at MetLife Stadium. I was very surprised to see him even leave New Jersey. I mean, it isn't fitting, though. You can't really be a Jets fan if you're not willing to travel by plane and go places. I mean, come on. But I'm with you. I mean, I thought at the end of the day, look, th- this defense just, I think when you look at it from up front, in the middle, and in the backfield, it's just as good as it gets. It really is. And, and now that you have a competent quarterback at uh, on offense, you're seeing the th- biggest thing I like about them is they distribute the ball to everybody. Mm-hmm. They're not a one man po- one man show. It's they're getting the ball to Decker, they're getting the ball to Marshall, they're running the ball well. They have a very good balance across both sides of the football. Oh, they definitely do, Joe. We look at their offense. The so one thing I've admired was the start of the game. Fitzpatrick went to go leave a message for the Dolphins, and that was he reaches out and hits Marshall down down the field for a big, long pass. You know what he did? He used Marshall's height in this game for Brent Grimes, a very small cornerback. I love it, though. He hands the ball off to Chris Ivory. Ivory's doing work all around. Eric Decker's getting involved. Every wide receiver is involved in this offense, and that's something we haven't been seeing with the Jets over the last couple of years. We've seen it mostly the Jets trying to run, force the ball at San Antonio Holmes a lot. Now we're seeing how you run an offense the proper way, like what Peyton Manning does with the Denver Broncos. How is it that everybody's so good on Denver? Because he shares the ball and everybody has a piece of it. I Honestly, I, great analysis right mm-hmm. there. And, and, I mean, that's the thing is, in the NFL, you see the difference that wins. It's so difficult to win in the NFL, but it's so easy to see what wins in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And distributing the ball, sharing the football is a big part of it. Even you look at that game last night, Seattle and Detroit. Detroit had been so heavily one-sided, get the ball to Calvin Johnson, and they just had nothing. Then Golden Tate comes on the mm-hmm. scene, and they have such a balanced attack there. This is what the Jets have now. Eric Decker, Brandon Marshall, they have a quarterback who can get them the football they run the football well the balance is tremendous and I think now we're starting to kind of see the true colors of the AFC East Mm -hmm. the Patriots are as good as it gets obviously Mm -hmm. I don't think the Bills scare you and the Dolphins are clearly a mess and when the season started I think we all said well the Jets are better but so is everyone else in that division I really think now we're starting to see the two teams that are really far and alone the best are Jets Patriots. Oh, most definitely, Joe. We look at the Dolphins Bills. The big problem with the Bills is secondary isn't as strong. The whole quarterback situation, which we knew was going to happen, was going to be their biggest problem. Until you have a set quarterback, that team will not be good. And they're very undisciplined. Pick up plenty of penalty yards. That was a big killer versus the Giants. The Dolphins, on the other hand, Ryan Tannehill could go take a step and go jump into the garbage can with Robert Griffin III because he has fallen off the face of the earth to be one of the second worst quarterbacks I've gotten to watch in this generation. Congratulations, Ryan Tannehill. Just a stellar performance. 19 for 44, 198 yards. You are terrible. And you know what's even worse? When you read a newspaper article and you find out that Joe Philbin had to tell his practice squad to take it easy on him because it's such a joke that you're giving up interceptions to a practice squad but Ryan Tannehill thank you very much you're just showing how bad that draft class was that year with quarterbacks I mean it's one (laughs) of those things now where teams feel like if I mean I gotta pay everybody I mean I the second I saw that I came it was over the summer I came Mm -hmm. in and I just blasted how on earth could you give that kind of deal to Ryan Tannehill the guy hasn't had a winning season in the NFL. All he's ever done is eight and eight, eight and eight, seven and nine. I mean, it and just boggles my. How do you give award that contract? And all he does is choke Joe too. No matter what, we've looked at his past couple seasons where the Dolphins could clinch a playoff spot for the wild card, and he can't even close out the last three games of a year. This guy is just tremendously awful, and I just there's no other way to phrase it. 
Dan Marino's saying right now, what are you doing? What are you doing? Dan Marino's like, I could probably go in there and be smart enough to make some smarter plays. Tremendously uh, awful is the word of the day. <laughs> the word of the day. <laughs> I think right on, though. I mean, man, Tannehill, that, Miami just – if I had to pick one team this year, I thought it was going to be the Browns, but it was the Dolphins who were just the most unwatchable team mm-hmm. so far all year. Uh, but let's go to a team that is becoming very watchable, and that's the New York Giants. Pick up their second win in a row. Right now, Rob, I look at this the, the NFC East after the Cowboys lose to the Saints, and I think this is the Giants' division to take. If they can beat San Francisco on Sunday Night Football this Sunday – I think it's their division to take. Almost oh, definitely, Joe. We we look at their division first off. The Cowboys are done. Straightforward. The Cowboys are done because Romo and Des Bryant are going to be coming too late in the season. The Redskins are nothing spectacular. They still don't have a quarterback that could lead them, and they're changing their running backs constantly. They have about three running backs that they're always switching. And then we look at the Eagles with Chip Kelly, with Demarco Murray now calling him out. You don't hand yeah. me the ball off enough. Sam Bradford, I mean, he had a decent game through three touchdowns, but he's still a little bit inaccurate of his passings. So, you know what? This is the Giants' division. They are taking it this year. They have to play with some heart. They got to get the running game. I mean, Joe, it was pretty productive on Sunday. We did see 38 yards out of Rashad Jennings. Really not that much. But, I mean, Andre Williams had 35 yards. Vereen had 21. But we need to see a running back in the Giants be able to produce. Produce 80 to 90 yards a game. And I think once that picks up, once Victor Cruz is healthy, then we're going to see more of a spread out ball game. We're going to see where Victor Cruz is going to be getting guarded a lot in games. Odell Beckham is going to be open a lot. Or Odell's going to be double teamed a lot. Victor Cruz will be open. And this Giants team should be good going into the postseason because they are going into the postseason this year. Uh, I think all that stuff is just money. And the biggest thing right now, too, I agree with is that running game right now. You get it a little bit more because the thing I do like is the depth that they have at mm-hmm. the running back. The versatility is the thing I like is they're not just pound the ball, put your head down and run. They can catch the ball. And we even saw Rashad Jennings, the uh, win against the Redskins, make that uh, block that punt on special teams. And that is another huge thing for the Giants right now is they're able to come away with turnovers in crucial phases of the game, and they're scoring off of those turnovers. When I was covering the Giants-Falcons game, Tom Coughlin said the reason we lost to Atlanta is because we didn't get turnovers. They got turnovers early in the game against Washington, scored points off them. They got a turnover against Buffalo, scored point off of it. If you're able to do that, and, and they're showing that they have guys on defense who are in the right place at the right time, they're going to be able to win a lot more games. And right now, the way it's panning out, San Francisco at Philadelphia and Dallas. So that's a difficult test. But if you come out of that and you beat the Eagles and the Cowboys who are down right now, the NFC East is yours, and it's amazing. The way they started the season 0-2, the heartbreaks in the fourth quarter, that they could take control of this NFC East. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's... It's going to be crazy, Joe. You know, I'm looking at the Giants now. You know, you bring up those two losses in the fourth quarter. This team should be 4-0 and at this point. And that's one thing that's just a killer. A team that should be undefeated right now. And you said they're going up against the 49ers, right? Yes. They should have no problem in that game. You know what? Colin Kaepernick, <laughs> another lost soul who San Francisco is going to be replacing soon because the guy is just like... Do we also get to use the word tremendously awful? Tremendously <laughs> awful yet again. No, but <laughs> Kaepernick is just... Joe, I don't even know if there's a word to explain him besides definable because everybody knows what he is going to do. He's too predictable. Everybody knows. He's either going to throw the ball, he's going to hand it off to the running back, or if he's pressured, he's going to run the ball. So if you have a quarterback who everybody is going to predict, the Giants are going to have absolutely no problem. You know, Clay Matthews even made it the point. You're not yes, Russell is. Wilson, brother. You're not a Russell Wilson. <laughs> ah, man, I love the, the diction and the, the word choice from you today, Rob. Could not end the show on a better note, but that is your week five, week four, I'm sorry, week five in college football. <laughs> Switching shows a little bit. Week four, New York football recap. Tremendously awful the day of the word. Colin Kaepernick, Ryan Tannehill. You heard it from Big Shot Rob himself. Tremendously awful. Start that training on Twitter, everybody. But we will be back next week, the same time, the same place. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back.